For eight is enough fans, the news of Adam Rich's sudden passing is tragic. Rich was known for playing Nicholas, the youngest Bradford kid in the television series. Regrettably, he's not the only member of the ensemble to have passed away. Join Facts First as we explore the circumstances behind the deaths of Adam Rich and some other stars of the popular TV series 8 is Enough. According to the LA County Coroner's Office, Rich passed away on Saturday in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles. Even though the cause of death is still being looked into, it has not been deemed suspicious. The AP was informed by DeRainey PR, Rich's publicist company, that Rich battled a debilitating form of depression and had made an effort to remove the stigma associated with discussing mental illness. Rich shared information about his mental health on Twitter and revealed he'd been sober for seven years in October. He admitted he wasn't flawless, citing arrests, several stays in rehab, multiple overdoses, and countless rehabs and relapses as he implored his nearly 19,000 followers to never give up. Prior to his untimely demise, Adam devoted himself to serving as an example for people who struggle with emotional and mental diseases. Over the years, he tried numerous experimental treatments without success while maintaining his sobriety. He died at age 54. His Legal Issues In his 20s, Adam struggled with depression and was frequently plagued by legal issues involving drugs and alcohol. In October of 91, he was accused of stealing a drug-filled syringe from an L.A. hospital where he was receiving treatment for a dislocated shoulder. Several months earlier, in April of 91, he is said to have shattered the store windows of a drugstore in West Hills. Authorities claimed he intended to steal morphine. Later that year, according to the deputy district attorney, Rich was charged with allegedly breaking the terms of a prior DUI conviction, and he made an appearance in Beverly Hills Municipal Court. He was put on five years probation after pleading guilty to his first offense of drunk driving, but he failed to show that he had completed the program required of him. Throughout his life, he received drug addiction treatment multiple times, including a spell at the Betty Ford Center in Rancho Mirage, California. He was also charged with DUI in 2002 after almost colliding with a California Highway Patrol vehicle stopped in the lane of a motorway that was being repaired at the time. Tribute In a statement, his publicist described Rich as being an overall lovely person. He called him generous, kind, and a fighter against mental illnesses. He referred to Rich as America's younger sibling. Durrani also revealed that he and Rich's friends had been concerned recently when they couldn't get in touch with him. On Instagram, Betty Buckley, who played Nicholas Bradford's stepmother, Abby, posted a lengthy and sentimental remembrance of her, quote, little companion. She praised Rich in her message and gushed about how much she enjoyed acting alongside him. She said he was charming, humorous, original, and genuine. Other people who paid tribute to Rich on social media included actor-director Jay Duplass, writer Stephen Rowley, comedian-actor John Fugelsang, Todd Bridges, and Lydia Cornell. Other cast members' deaths. Dick Van Patten Richard Vincent Van Patten was born on December 9, 1928. He was a television staple in the U.S. for eight decades. He also dabbled in comedy, business, and animal welfare advocacy. His most famous role was as Tom Bradford, the patriarch of the Bradford family. Later, he appeared as a lead or supporting actor in numerous feature films, such as Charlie, Soylent Green, and Mel Brooks's Robin Hood Men in Tights. He also founded National Guide Dog Month and Natural Balance Pet Foods. Patton battled diabetes at certain points. In the early months of 2006, he experienced a diabetic stroke and was rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center. Van Patten was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but eventually overcame the illness. He was given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1985, and in January of 2008, Palm Springs honored him with a star on the Walk of Stars there. The next year, he wrote a book titled 80 is Not Enough, which was released by Phoenix Books. In it, Van Patten reflected on his eight decades in the entertainment world and shared stories and observations. On June 23, 2015, Van Patten, who was 86, passed away in Santa Monica, California. The reported cause was diabetes-related complications. Dick Van Patten was a bright, jovial person, always generous and eager to play, tease, and constantly keep everyone smiling. He was the epitome of professionalism, an excellent actor, a comedic master, and a compassionate person. He's buried in Los Angeles' Hollywood Hills Forest Lawn Memorial Park. Diana Highland Highland was born in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, to John Theodore and Mary Gentner as Diane Gentner. 
In 1955, at age 19, she appeared in an episode of Robert Montgomery Presents, which was her first acting job. She frequently made guest and supporting appearances in a number of TV series over the following 10 years, including The Fugitive 11th Hour, Naked City, The Invaders, and The Twilight Zone. She was also in the 1966 movie The Chase, starring Marlon Brando, Jane Fonda, and Robert Redford. She starred in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, a 1976 TV film for which she received a posthumous Emmy Award. She co-starred in Eight is Enough the following year with Dick Van Patten, but she only made an appearance in four episodes before passing away. Her character, Joan Bradford, was written off as having passed away as well. Her death was at the age of 41 from breast cancer on March 27, 1977. Lanny O'Grady Actress and talent manager Lanny O'Grady was born Lanita Rose O'Grady on October 2, 1954. Her most well-known performance was as Mary Bradford, the oldest sister. At age 13, O'Grady made her acting debut in a scene from The High Chaparral, a TV show. In the 1990s soap opera Days of Our Lives, she played Mrs. Kramer in her final acting performance. She gave up acting and switched to being a talent agent in the early 90s. After experiencing agoraphobia and memory loss, she started taking non-narcotic medications for a recognized chemical imbalance in her brain. In a 1994 LA Times interview, O'Grady revealed she had panic attacks beginning when she was 18, but wasn't diagnosed with panic disorder until she was 21. She also acknowledged abusing alcohol and prescription medications, including Valium. She checked into Cedar sinai Hospital in December of 1998 to undergo detoxification. 46-year-old O'Grady passed away September 25, 2001, in her home in Valencia, Santa Clarita, California. The coroner's office claimed she died of multiple drug toxicity after an autopsy confirmed dangerous concentrations of Vicodin and the antidepressant Prozac in her bloodstream but the coroner was unable to determine whether she committed suicide or died in an accident. Michael Toma Michael Toma, an actor and professor, played Tom Bradford's best friend, Dr. Greg Maxwell, in 23 episodes. Among his classmates at the prestigious American Academy of Dramatic Arts were Grace Kelly and Don Rickles. Later, he pursued a career on Broadway while continuing to teach at the Academy. When Eight is Enough finished its network run, Toma enjoyed a recurring role on fame as theater instructor Mr. Crandall. He also worked as production supervisor or stage manager for several big shows, including the original runs of O Calcutta and Bye Bye Birdie. On September 3, 1982, Toma, who left the Fame series amid a two-year battle with cancer, passed away. He was 55. James Caron James Karen was an actor who appeared on Broadway, in movies, and on TV. He was born Jacob Karnofsky and passed away on October 23, 2018. Karen is well known for his parts in Poltergeist, The Return of the Living Dead, Wall Street, The China Syndrome, and Invaders from Mars. He's also known for playing Elliot Randolph, Tom Bradford's employer, on Eight is Enough. Some contend he was best known as the signature pitchman for Pathmark, starring in advertisements for the now-defunct East Coast grocery store chain from the late 1970s, which gave him the nickname Mr. Pathmark. He was married to folk singer-actress Susan Reed, with whom he had a son named Reed. Karen passed away at the age of 94 at his L.A. residence in 2018. Now it's time to hear from you. Who was your favorite character from 8 is Enough? Let us know in the comments section below.